to all my floss tube neighbors. I am Chris and this is Chris Cross Stitch and today is Tuesday, February the 27th, 2024 and this is floss tube number 72. Well, I'm so glad to see all of you today. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend with me. I know that there are so many wonderful floss tube channels out there nowadays and the fact that you have chosen to listen to me prattle on while you stitch or have your morning coffee or your evening toddy. Uh, I'm very grateful for that. If you are new to my channel, welcome. This is a channel primarily about cross stitching, but I like to think of it as my own little variety show. Um, not that I tap dance, although that is not completely out of the question. But um, this is my little corner of floss tube, and I'm so glad to have you here if you're new. if you, I hope that you like it enough to um, like the video, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell so that you can know when I post new videos, and you are most welcome here. If you are a returning neighbor, it's good to have you back. Um, I hope you've had a great couple of weeks. And I, just in general, I want to say as an introduction, to all of you who have written me either in the comments or or privately or post or messaged me on Instagram about the 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 story that I told low over many episodes of my relationship with my mother thank you from the bottom of my heart i think the most rewarding thing um about telling that story aside from the cathartic experience it was for me and it definitely was that but i think the most rewarding thing and and you know the 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 real reason for the doing of it has been to hear all of you who have had similar experiences in your life whether to that degree or not i think it just illustrates how many of us are uh, survivors of, of, of difficult times with our families. I think it demonstrates how resilient we all are and can be when, need, when we need to be. And I think that it's, um, I think it's wonderful to know that we are not alone, that no one is ever alone, as Mr. Sondheim said so beautifully. We are, uh, we can share these traumas and these these um, hurts and in the sharing rise above them and come together and realize that we, we're strong and we are survivors and good for us for the doing so. So I just wanted to, to start off with that. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all those comments. And today we're going to take a complete departure during story time. We're not going to do story time. We're going to do Chris's story chest, and we'll get more. We'll talk more about that later. But there is a lot of cross stitching today. So without further ado, let's move on to the cross stitching. I had a couple of finishes this this past fortnight, and I'm very proud to say that once again I have completed my whip go calls for February. Um, I had two. One was to stitch five days on Train of Dreams, which I did way more than that, and you're going to see that uh, work in progress in a minute. But the other whip go call for February was to complete two ornaments. If you're new here, you will not know this. If you're if you are a returning neighbor, you will have heard this ad nauseum. But I'm working on two different trees. I'm working on a cross stitch tree, a complete cross stitch tree, and I'm working on a Halloween tree. And I'm also doing 24 and 24. So every single month, I will be stitching at least one ornament. And on many of my whip go uh, squares, I have stitch two ornaments. And both for January and February, I had to stitch two ornaments. Well, I did it. The first finish is the Adorable Turtle Doves by Satsuma Street. I have stitched um, the partridge. I have stitched now the turtle doves. I've stitched the French hens, and I've just received my kit for the calling birds in the mail. So that will be my March ornament, and I'm very excited about that. I don't have to stitch two in March, thankfully. Um, but this is just adorable. I love Satsuma Street. 
Jody is one of my favorite designers. These are wonderful kits on the perforated paper. And if you've never tried a perforated paper ornament, I encourage you to start with Satsuma Street because the beading is not nearly as intense as a Mill Hill ornament. And yet you still get that. You get that technique and to experiment with that technique. And they're just so adorable. Uh, turtle doves. I did substitute a couple of um, flosses for this one because I did this from a PDF download uh, that I bought on her Etsy site. I did not buy the kit. She was out of the kits for a while. And I mentioned last week, and some of you had not heard of it, and I, I mentioned it two weeks ago, and some of you had not heard about these DMC to DMC conversion websites. If you go into Google and you type DMC to DMC conversion, there are several websites that will show you, if you input a DMC number, they will show you the closest shade to it. And because I had the majority of the flosses for this one, and I didn't, I was lazy one day and I didn't want to go to Michael's, I typed that in, I found a color that I had, and it's absolutely perfect. You'd never know if you weren't looking at the exact pattern. But that is Turtle Doves by Satsuma Street, and I just love it, and I'm glad to have at least... Now I'll be able to catch up with all of the first four birds of the partridge of the 12 days of Christmas. The second finish that I had over the past fortnight, I love the word fortnight. I'm going to say it a lot. <laughs> I just like that word. It's so easy to say two weeks. I mean, it's so much easier to refer to two weeks as a fortnight. 14 nights, right? Anyway, the next ornament that I finished was French Country Reindeer by my dear, dear, sweet friend, Judy Whitman of JBW Designs. This is um, from her booklet entitled Christmas Ornaments 5. And there is, I, I said this on Instagram, but I'm going to say it again. The only person who could inspire me to stitch one over one on a 30, what count this ever is, is Judy Whitman. Because let me tell you, that is T90. <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, that's some Alabama coming out, T90. Um, so small. And, you know, thank goodness for my plus two magnification readers. And even then I'm like, okay, let's go really slow. Let's go really slow. Um, I just love it. Oh gosh, my nose is running. Please excuse me, I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Judy Whitman is the only person who can inspire me to stitch one over one. And this French country reindeer was just a joy to stitch. This is done with flower silks, um, uh, by Stitchy Box, uh, a beautiful variegated silk called Dionysus's Wine. This was part of a series of fibers that they put out um, a few years ago, but I had to buy it because I'm such a lover of Greek mythology and literature. Uh, all of those stories were wonderful. And it's a whole series based on the gods and heroes of Greek mythology. But uh, Dionysus's wine was just perfect for this particular one because it's not uber purple. It's more of the cranberries and the, the wine, of course, the wine colors, the deep burgundies um, that are on my main tree. So I'm so happy to have finished this. And it's just, again, no one, no one, Judy Whitman is, a, is in her design style is so unique. And I just, I adore her and I adore her work. Um, that's a love letter to you, Judy. <laughs> but uh, I'm so glad I finished this and I hope to send this to a very special finisher out there that we all know and love and see if she has the time to do it for me. Um, more on that later. But that was French Country Reindeer, the second of my two ornaments for February and the completion of my Whipgo for February. I stitched so much over the past two weeks. I loved it. New Hampshire, people do tend to hibernate and everyone kind of goes inward. And I love that. I love that about this time of year. I think it's very needed um, 
to go, you know, to hibernate for a while, to not be extremely social and to, to just take some time for yourself. Well, I did over these past few weeks and did a lot of wonderful stitching, the two ornaments you just saw, but I also worked a ton on my first work in progress, The Train of Dreams. This is a piece by Heaven and Earth Designs with artwork by Randall Spangler. You've seen it before. It is my only full coverage in rotation right now. I have another full coverage piece that I am, have just about decided I'm going to retire as a UFO. Um, and then I'm going to start a massive one next month. More on that to come. But the train of dreams, I got on a tear and I just, I just, since I switched over and started doing cross country technique on this, I have just made so much progress as you can see. This is a joy to stitch. It is, um, I'm learning so much about my own full coverage technique. And this will not be a perfect piece by any stretch of the imagination when it is completed. But uh, I love it and I just couldn't put it down. This was part of a, of a train of dream sal that was started a few years ago by, my, um, by uh, several people across the, well, in Europe. Um, uh, primarily my friend Michaela of Nadelsucht, the Flosstube channel Nadelsucht. I've, I've mentioned her several times. Hi, Michaela. And uh, I just love it. I'm so glad she turned me on to it because it's colorful and it's entertaining and it's a good one to practice your, your um, full coverage technique on. I am thinking though, now that I have gotten really deeply into this one, that because it is a mini, that lends itself to more confetti. <laughs> and the larger ones, of course, not that larger ones don't have confetti, but we'll see. I'm going to, I'm interested to see how that works out. But that's my train of dreams. I love it. It's still out. I haven't put it away yet. I want to finish that, that other page before I put it away for a while. Train of dreams. Heaven and Earth designs. My next work in progress was a bit of a milestone. I reached a bit of a milestone with the beautiful um, The Fruits of Plenty by Modern Folk Embroidery, my friend Jacob. Such an amazing, stunning piece. You all love this one, and boy, I do too. I finally finished the March block. Um, again, this was a, a stitch along, and blocks were released monthly. With this block completed, I'm now 25% through the thing. And it is a joy to work on. It is also tedious to work on. And last night when I was finally finishing the March block, I said to myself at one point, Jacob needs to calm down. <laughs> Don't drink coffee, Jacob, before you start designing. There are so many stitches in this thing. So many. Um, but I love it. I, don't get me wrong, I love it with all my heart. And I, I finally completed the, the March block and I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it out too because again, I am hopeful that I might be able to, keep, to do a block every month. And if I do that, then I will finish this piece this year. And since I just finished the March block, I'm gonna move on to the April block and try to stitch the April block in March. Now, granted, I'm stitching the April block of two years ago. <laughs> but hey, you know, in my head, I'm ahead of the game. So that's all that matters, right? <laughs> um, I love it. This is done with three different shades of floss with mixtures therein. Um, I think one of these days, I'm gonna do a mini floss tube to just explain how I have worked these variegated threads in this piece because it's very, um, it would take too much time to explain it exactly, and so many of you have asked about it. So I may indeed do that very soon, but enough about this one. I'm just so proud of it, and I'm just, the more I do it, the more I'm enraptured with the colors, and I cannot wait to finish it. Modern Folk Embroidery is the Fruits of Plenty. Um, I, yeah, beautiful. My next work in progress was the delightful Queen of Hearts, from Brooks Books. Brooks Books is a wonderful uh, uh, shop on Etsy. Uh, she's a lovely designer 
and um, has so many beautiful things on offer in her Etsy shop. I, I encourage you to check it out. Queen of Hearts, I started as part of my 24 starts in 24. Again, 12 of those 24 will be ornaments. The other 12 will be a mixture of large pieces, medium pieces, and small pieces. And this is one of the medium sized to small pieces. The Queen of Hearts started, obviously, because I love literature and I'm going to, I have a little reading room and I have my Wizard of Oz piece up there, um, my Satsuma Wizard of Oz piece that uh, I'll pop up, I'll pop up photo of it in. And uh, I'm going to put the Queen of Hearts in there too. All of these literary characters. I've got an Edgar Allan Poe chart I want to start that will go in there. So that's where Queen of Hearts is going to go. She'll also be part of my Valentine's Day decor. Um, I'll move her around maybe. I think I'm going to do her on a stand-up, a flat fold stand-up. Um, but I couldn't put this one down for a couple of days either. Uh, it's just delightful to stitch. I am doing a few conversions here with the floss, and I'm using another one of the flower silks by Stitchy Box for the veil. I wanted the veil. The veil is a variegated thread. Um, that's a, a variegated silk from Stitchy Box called Hecate's Hounds. It's a mixture of grays and reds and dark charcoal colors, but it was perfect for this because it, it gives it kind of a diaphanous look. And uh, I just, I'm enjoying stitching this so much. It's on a beautiful fabric called Liberty. The name of the dyer escapes me, but it will be in the information below. She's so much fun. And uh, I haven't picked her up in a few days, but today I spun the wheel for what whip I'll work on today after this all gets uploaded and I drew, and she came up. So I'll be stitching on her later this afternoon. The Queen of Hearts by Brooks Books, and uh, I can't wait to get her face in. That will be, that'll be, it's so much fun. And that flamingo and the hedgehog. Oh, I got to get busy on it. The Queen of Hearts. Neighbors, my life has changed in many ways since starting this Floss Tube channel. But within the past couple of weeks, my life has significantly changed regarding my floss storage. <laughs> I, know, I know that you think, especially with me, that that was going to be some great philosophical diatribe, but no, it's all about my floss storage. Let me tell you something. Oh boy, was I in peril. I have wanted to... Uh, I've, I've started collecting so many different uh, fibers and had started doing that when we were in the old house and then the move happened and everything got put on hold and then we got here and you know the past low many months have been sorting the house and what finally catching my breath at the beginning of 24 I decided I was going to put a stop to this the, the heinous situation that my DMC was in. Now I was using little plastic baggies and cards and it, it, it worked, it worked, it worked just fine. But I knew that the day was going to come that I was going to have to hunker down and become a bobinator. And I have become a bobinator. Look at this beauty. Look at that. This is an anal retentive obsessive compulsive dream come true. This, this is, I have ordered a set, now listen, these bobbins aren't cheap. This was an investment. This was a decided, I'm going to, I'm going to invest in this and it's going to, you know, not for the faint of heart. But there is an Etsy shop called the Nift, I'm looking at my notes, the Nifty Needler Shop. And owned by a husband and wife, if I'm not mistaken. And they print bobbins, I know it's backwards, I'm sorry, with the DMC number stamped on it. These are of a special size that fits into this case, which you can order on Amazon, exactly. And not only that, 
it's double-sided. So theoretically, you could fit, I mean, I don't know if you had every single color, I doubt that it would all fit in there. You'd probably have to get another um, case. But, and you can see how many I have that I've not bobbinated or used. But this thing is just, is just phenomenal. I have, I feel so happy about this and I wanted to share it with you. I still have many more to go to, I, I still have many more bobbins to, I also ordered a, a bobbin winder from the same company, um, which works very well. I have many more to go. I have many um, little baggies and flosses in with particular projects. I'm starting to, and I've decided what I'm going to do is I will keep those with the projects just so to have a flow. And after I'm finished, I will then bobinate them or put them into the overflow because I'm still going to be using a bag system for my, like my overflow DMC. But when my go-to place for the first, for, for, a, for a floss color, if I need to pull it, will be this. And it's just so, I just, let me tell you, this makes me so happy. <laughs> you have no idea. This makes me so happy. So I just wanted to share that with you. I will post the link to both that Etsy store and this Amazon case um, uh, in the show notes. I'm going to order another one before I do that, though, just because I have a feeling y'all are going to love it and sell it. Now, listen, I don't know if this case will fit normal bobbins because this is or, an, or a wider a wider bobbin. This is not as wide, I don't believe, as some of the other ones. I may be wrong. I could pull one. I'm not going to do that now. But these particular ones fit in this particular case perfectly. But again, for this kind of custom work, and he does a beautiful job with it, but it's not cheap. This was, I don't exactly know off the top of my head how much it was, but it was, um, it was, you know, I think it was around $175. But for someone who cross stitches as much as we do, if you, you know, if, if you save up, you know, I, it's, it's a good, it was a good investment and one that I uh, felt was um, worth it. And so far it has absolutely been. So there you go. That's my happy place for the day. It's time for Chris's toy chest, and this is actually a bit of a retrospective because this is a segment from my Christmas special of two years ago when I uh, compiled the toys that I had discussed that previous season and explained how it all started and my, my philosophy on why I do it. Um, so I hope that you enjoy it. If, you've, if you're new to this channel, you'll be like, what is Chris's toy chest? Um, and if, especially if you haven't gone back and watched any of the, the prior videos in which I featured the toy chest segment. And they were mostly that first season. I haven't done any of this second season, so they were a while back. You may not have seen it at all. This will be entertaining if for nothing more than the hairstyles that you will see the pandemic hair grow out uh, experiment. <laughs> and let me tell you, when I go back and I look at some of the videos, not only am I uh, flabbergasted by the rough nature of them, I'm flabbergasted by the hair on my head because some days I, I guess I thought every time I filmed it looked okay. But no, no sports fans, <laughs> it did not. I hope you enjoy this, but but this is about the toy segment, the Chris's toy chest segment. So I hope you enjoy it, and there will be more toys to come afterwards. And so many of you love this segment because it reminds you of memories that you had, and that's what this is all about. It's about taking a little bit of time out of our day to go back to a happier, less stressful moment in our lives, and and letting that moment bring a smile to our faces to carry throughout the rest of the day. I, I'm sitting on a bar stool 
And if you noticed in the last video, the moments when I look like I'm doing this, it's not that I'm on a, a, a ship or anything like that. It's that I'm on, I get off the bar stool and then I get back on the bar stool and then I have to get settled. So I'll try not to be like a weeble. And that's another story. I'm dating myself again. Weeble, you know, remember weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. It was a, it was a toy in the seventies. It was like an egg. It was basically an egg with a person painted on it. It wobbled. I'm dating myself. Nobody's gonna know who that is. I had no idea last week when I just offhandedly mentioned Weebles that it was going to be such um, an evocative term for all of you. So I, I got a picture and um, I actually had these. I had I had these, these very, well not these very ones, but I had this, these exact ones of them. Probably my favorite toy as a child, which was the Fisher-Price Castle Playset. The Sears and Roebuck, Roebuck Catalog Wish Book. This was so exciting to us as children. We would carry these to school and circle them and look through the pages until they were almost in tatters. My cousins, for example, had this set of steel um, appliances and we used to play in their basement for hours on those things. And I thought it would be nice to talk a little bit about my buddy Snoopy. And this is one of the first toys that I remember. This, um, this play set. But it didn't stop there. No, I had the Snoopy toothbrush holder. See, Sonicare, listen to me. Hear my words, Sonicare. Make me a Snoopy Sonicare. I will be the first one in line. Then there was the Snoopy snow cone make machine. And finally, this plush. I didn't have a teddy bear. I had this. This went everywhere with me. I love him. I love him, I love him, I love him. And, you know, on my deathbed, I want a Snoopy under my arm. This shows me, this picture shows me with uh, uh, sporting a fabulous 1970 white tanked uh, turtleneck. Gosh, I wish I had that now. But um, behind me, you will see the Fisher-Price Castle, which I loved, and you will see the Snoopy and Friends playset, which I talked about most recently. And by the way, happy birthday, Snoopy. Today, August 10th, is Snoopy's official birthday. So the toy that I'm gonna talk about today is the Fisher-Price Sesame Street playset. Yes, very, <laughs> very excited. I, you know people on Sesame Street, don't you? Yes, you do, okay, great. I loved it. I loved everything about it. The six million dollar man and the bionic woman. There were these fembot things that their faces lifted off and that, that, that kind of, it, it traumatized me a little bit, Sal. The 1975, Mego, Star Trek, USS Enterprise, action playset. And I loved this thing. Uh, not only did I love playing with it, I loved playing or, or, or drawing with it. I loved playing with the rings for all sorts of things. They became bracelets and frisbees and what have you, but Spirograph. The other toy that you may not know about is the Mighty Men and Monster Maker color forms, Lincoln Logs, and Tinker Toys. And a toy from my childhood that brought me absolute happiness was Dapper Dan. That red vest and those yellow shoes and those checkered pants and all of, you know, five strands of hair on his head, bless his heart. I, I, you know, I started thinking why this brings me so much happiness and why so many of you respond to it. And I've been thinking a lot about that. You know, you're a grown man, you're talking about toys. 
but I don't think we ever need to stop being childlike in, in, one, in some regards. That sense of wonder and joy and discovery and um, drive to learn is something I think should be present with us throughout our lives. And that's why I unabashedly will continue to talk about my toys that I had as a child because they formed me, they made me who I am in the playing with them. They formed my relationships with the loving adults who were giving them to me. And, you know, in a world that's sometimes very bleak, sometimes we need a weeble. We need to remember the Play-Doh, you know? Or, or, or what it felt like to open that Millennium Falcon that Christmas morning. It's important. And if I'm, you know, gonna bring you a toy every two weeks or every week that makes you happy, I'm gonna do it. So there you go. That's the story behind Chris's toy chest. Some other floss tubers have asked me um, uh, since, I in the interim, since I began doing those, could they do those on their Floss Tube channel? I say yes, absolutely. I'm more than happy for you to take that idea and run with it if you have a Floss Tube channel and you want to talk about something special from your from your childhood. That's the entire point of the exercise. So um, there will be more, more, as I said, there will be more toys upcoming in future videos. It was a banner couple of weeks for Happy Mail, and I have some thank yous to offer up. The first goes to our dear neighbor, Julie. Julie sent me a sweet gift. After she saw that I uh, was stitching the Queen of Hearts by Brooke Books, she, Brooks, sorry, Brooks Books, she sent me something that she had stitched in her stash that she was, she just wanted to de-stash the, the chart. But she sent, and this is one that I was actually looking at for this year. She sent, sent me the lovely Spirit of America lady. And I was looking at this particular one. This is one of Brooks' designs that I've mentioned previously that it's layered. There are layered, um, you stitch it on perforated paper, but her wings, I think she's, She's a, yeah, she's a dimensional angel ornament. So her wings are one layer and then the her body layer and then you have the garland in the front. So thank you so much for this. I just really appreciate it. She also sent me some silver and gold perforated paper. And you know, I had a gold foil perforated paper debacle um, over Christmas. I started doing something on it. I just didn't understand why or how. But she sent me these ornaments that she stitched. Look at that. Now that's how you stitch an ornament on perforated paper, you guys. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And just so many different, and they're, they're just, they're unlike any other ornament that I've ever seen. And that's how you use this gold and silver perforated paper. Julie, I'm assuming you meant, I mean, are these mine? Did you, did you gift these to me as well? Because if you did, thank you so terribly much. And she has the patterns for these, uh, the, the charts for these as well. I'm going to find out more about them because you better believe this is how I'm going to use that gold and silver perforated paper from now on. So thank you so much for that, Julie. A huge thank you to our neighbor, Shirley. Shirley has um, a, another it, kind of a de-stash situation. She had a kit in her stash that she had uh, not stitched and she was she decided she would gift it to someone. And she I'm very grateful that she sent it to me knowing how much I love modern folk embroidery. She sent me the modern folk embroidery moonshine cabin. Um, and this comes with the the Leo and Roxy or the Roxy fiber flosses and uh, um, um, fabric, and an adorable card, uh, which I just love that that 3D VW bug, and this beautiful project bag, an embarrassment of riches that I just I again I feel so undeserving. <laughs> 
of all this kindness, but, and I feel a little bit embarrassed about showing you these things sometimes because, you know, I just feel weird about it, but I'm so grateful. So thank you, Shirley. I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. That was my stomach. Did you hear my stomach? My stomach thanks you as well. <laughs> and then finally, I received a beautiful package from our dear neighbor, Jane. Jane is um, uh, a longtime uh, viewer, neighbor of Chris Cross Stitch, dear friend, and I just adore her so much. You'll remember Jane because Jane offered up the beautiful piece that she had partially completed as a giveaway. Uh, when I grow old, I will wear purple. That, you know, it's been the past two videos you've seen that. Well, I received the package that contained the chart, and this will be on its way to you, Lorraine. Lorraine was the one who, who won this. This thing is even more stunning in person than it was in the photos, so you're in for a treat, Lorraine. But Jane didn't just send that. She sent a whole bunch of charts that she was also destashing, charts to be used in giveaways, and three of them will be today's giveaways. So thank you, Jane, for your continuing support and kindness, and uh, we'll get to the giveaways here in just a second. To all of you, to Julie, to Shirley, to Jane, thank you, thank you, thank you. Speaking of giveaways, we had three giveaways from last week. The first is a little three-in-one stitch kit from Cross Stitching Magazine. This has three little cute little cupcake cards, cupcake cards, cupcake cards. Um, no, there was not a glitch in the program. I just occasionally like to give myself tongue twisters as if it's not hard enough for me to talk already. Uh, this is very cute. I, I would probably frame these instead of, or do something with them instead of cards because I, let me tell you, if you cross stitch a card for somebody, that means you love them a lot. <laughs> um, but this goes to Lana Dean. Lana Dean, congratulations. The cupcakes are yours. Next, we have a, another kit. This is from another, uh, I believe this was another magazine promotion. All Our Yesterdays. It's got a cute little girl sitting with her puppy dog on the beach. This is a card kit. It's neat, too, because you, the, the cutout, you can see the card part is kind of the background, and you just stitch the doggy and the, the little girl. Again, I wouldn't give this as a card. I'd frame that. That's adorable. This goes to, who's this going to? Nola McNeely. Nola McNeely, congratulations. Yesterday's, that's yours. And lastly, we had from the kind people at Fat Quarter Shop and It's So Emma, we have one of the Denim Daisy project bags. This is the um, project bag that's out of a a kind of a perforated plastic material. Very. This is only half of the bag, very large. Keyword for this was denim. And this is going to Brenda Johnson. Brenda Johnson, congratulations. Sorry for the ruffle ruffle. Those will all go out when I send out um, giveaways. And I'm behind, I just want you to know, from the Department 56 book onwards. I haven't sent those yet. They're all sitting right here. I'm going to get to that this week. Cross my heart. Pinky swear. Um, and if I hear from you in, in time, the new ones will go out as well. So congratulations to the winners. If you won, please send me your mailing address to crisscrossstitch at gmail.com. Make sure you pay attention to how it's written. I'm putting it right there. And I will get those out to you. Like I said, pinky swear by the end of this week. And three more giveaways this week. All these courtesy of our neighbor Jane, as I mentioned earlier. The first is a Summer House Stitchwork chart. This is Mistress Mary. Mistress Mary. Um, I'll try to, yeah, I'll put photos in of these because these are kind of small. Um, this, we're going to do a keyword for this of Mary. M-A-R-Y. Mary. 
Next up, we have a beautiful chart by one of my favorite designers that I've never stitched. Um, I love the blue flower. I've never stitched a blue flower. I'm going to stitch a blue flower this year. But this one is an original design by Janine McGowan, Gather with Joy. Sorry for the ring light. Gather, well, I'm going to put photos in, so that's fine. Gather with Joy. The keyword for this one will be gather. And finally, we have a, um, a larger piece. Still, We're still in winter here in New Hampshire, and I think that this is appropriate. This is a design by Letty Eckberg, The Needle's Notion. This is Alphabet on Ice. Alphabet on Ice. It's really cute. Mittens. Mittens in a snowfall scene. This, uh, the key word for this will be alphabet. Alphabet. So with all my giveaways, please be 18 years of age or older so that I can ask you for your mailing address. Please like the video, be a subscriber to the channel, um, and don't use keywords such as, um, you know, in your comment, don't use anything as such as giveaway or prizes. You know, you, you know how to do those things, so... And we will make those announcements. Oh, here's the thing. A um, bit of a segue, but I'm not exactly sure when my next video will post because we are going to go on a trip. Uh, we have a scheduled work trip event thing um, that will take us away in Oh, in two weeks time. The, the week that I would post next is the week that we will be away. So I will probably not be, I'll probably only have one video in March and it will be towards the end of March. So um, that's when we'll announce the winners of this particular giveaway. So uh, that'll give lots of you time to put your names in for those three fabulous charts. That's the video for today. Again, you may not see me for a few weeks. Um, uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to post another video until later, later in March. Um, and I hate that, actually. I, I, if I, I'm not going to try to do a video next week because, because I don't think I'll have enough time to get enough. Well, we'll see. We'll see when you see me next, but don't worry about me until the end of March. If I haven't posted by April 1st, <laughs> send out the cavalry, <laughs> the Canadian Mounties. Anyway, um, thank you so much for taking time out to spend with me today. I love visiting with you, and I, I just enjoy every second of our time together. I hope that you have a great couple of weeks of stitching ahead. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you're having a wonderful time. And I hope that you continue to, to have that until next we see each other. So until then, take care and bye-bye.